it's really an honor, a privilege, a delight to introduce Leona Mitchell, who um, made her professional debut at the San Francisco Opera in 1972. Um, Leona was a leading uh, spinto soprano at the Metropolitan Opera for 18 seasons running, specializing in Puccini and Verdi. She performed in all the great opera houses of the world. Um, she sang Bess in the first complete recording of Porgy and Bess, uh, with Lauren Mazel conducting, which won a Grammy for Best Opera Recording. Leona sung for four presidents. She is a, a member elected to the Oklahoma Music Hall of Fame, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, Oklahoma Women's Hall of Fame, the Oklahoma Jazz Hall of Fame, lots of halls of fame, Oklahoma African American Hall of Fame, and Leona has two honorary doctorates from Oklahoma University and Oklahoma City University. And Oklahoma uh, welcomes Leona as one of its state cultural ambassadors uh, appointed by Governor Henry. So um, I give you now the legendary Leona Mitchell. Leona. I'm here. Hi, Leona. So great to see you. An, Hi, an old, an old, old friend. Oh, it's 35 years now. <gasps> oh, yes, yes. Time has moved on, hasn't it? My goodness. Yes, yes. 35 years. Yeah. So, yeah. So, wow. let me ask you you're a, a native of, of Oklahoma, one of Oklahoma's great native, native daughters. And um, mm -hmm. we, uh, so I, I think people may want to know what, why did you, dis why and how did you decide to pursue a career in opera growing up in, in Enid, Oklahoma? Well, I'm one of 15 children. I'm the 10th child. And my father was a minister and he had every, instruments you can imagine in our home. He played them all by ear. He started his own family group like the Jacksons, except it was called them uh, Musical Mitchells. It was my elder sisters and brothers. And they used to travel in the state in Texas and Kansas and they did all this music. And my mom, me being the 10th child, she said, well, I'm gonna see if this works. I'm gonna do this old wives tale. I'm gonna dedicate this child to music. So. She dedicated me to music, but I have to tell one funny story. My eldest brother, when they were practicing, when I was a tiny wee one, I was trying to sing with him. He said, get away, you can't sing. And he said, oh, I cried and cried that day. He said he thinks that sparked something in me to make me this singer because I was gonna show him I could sing. So anyway, what made me wanna be an opera singer was this wonderful teacher in Oklahoma by Miss Preby. She had heard me in her choir and she heard my voice and she was deciding to put some opera in a program. And it was when Leontine Price had made her debut at the Met. So she had me listen to Leontine Price and Maria Callas. I listened to the last act of Aida, can you imagine at 17? So she got me really interested and I couldn't believe how opera, I had never heard opera. And my first impression was, wow, they can sing like that and they can sing that high and because I was in gospel music so I didn't know that and I had to learn everything from scratch. And, and you, you studied with Inez Silver as well. Oh yes, uh, this teacher from Oklahoma, I called those ladies my two angels. The first one was Mrs. Preeby and the second one was Miss Silberg and she physically drove me to OCU so that I would do an audition. I wasn't convinced I wanted to be this opera singer yet. So she just made me promise and I auditioned and I, though she kept leaving the room and bringing people back in. And I thought, well, I, I don't know auditions. I guess I didn't get anything, but she came back to tell me, no, we're giving you a, a, a scholarship. She said, because I told everyone you're one of 15, there's no money in your family. And so I found out 40 years later that I was the first recipient of a, a full vocal scholarship at the private university of OCU. And Inez was everything to me. She, she brought me up. Wow. She trained me. Fantastic. But then fast forward from there, you, uh, you made your Met debut at 24 
in yeah. singing, singing Michael and Carmen with um, Placido Domingo as Don Jose in 1975, right? Do you, do you uh, is there right, anything, right. you remember anything in, that stands well, out well, about that experience? Yeah, I, you know, I was just out of university. I, the reason I got the Met debut if anyway is because of San Francisco. I had won their national uh, competition and Kurt Adler had me do have some of his spring operas and I'd done Micaela's and Suora Angelica and Donna Anna. And uh, matter of fact, uh, when I was learning Donna Anna in the program, I'd gotten laryngitis. So I had to learn the opera by myself. So Kurt was so impressed, he gave me his conductor's award. <laughs> Year because I actually had that opera learned by the time I got back. But because of a uh, artistic administrator in San Francisco, when a, a chance came up at the Met and he says, I know who can do that, Le Mikael Leona. And here I'm going, I haven't even really done very much. And so I, I'm going to tell you something about that Met debut. God it was with me and OCU's training and everything because I didn't get any stage perform uh, rehearsal. I didn't see, hear the orchestra or, or the sets until I got there. And I'm a, ju I'm a juvenile, you know, I don't know anything about anything. So I remember Placido came back and he says, hello, I'm Placido, because they didn't use him in the rehearsals with me. I met him that night. And he said, aren't you afraid? And I said, well, I, I don't have time to be afraid. I've got to get back on stage. <laughs> so that tenacity that Inez taught me. And, and by the way, you know, at OCU, I got to get a lot of experience because in an undergrad setting, because she put me in every opera that I found out about. And she was just a magnificent woman. She prepared me for, to make that Met debut like that. Well, let, let's hear a little bit of, um, of Butterfly, uh, we, so, which was a, li a little bit later in 83 when you sang um, uh, Bene, the duet from Act One with Giuliano Cianella at the Met Centennial Gala. Um, and mm -hmm. Michelle, I mm -hmm. think we have a video of that.
butterfly. Oh my goodness. Oh. Such a, I such loved a, Butterfly. Oh, what, did you have a, fav, did you have a, a favorite role at, uh, in, in your career? Was it Butterfly? Well, it was at the top. I always, it was very difficult for me to say what was my favorite. Everything that I was doing at the moment was my favorite. But I love Butterfly because of the pathos and the story. And um, gosh, I always said Puccini, he outlined the characters so vividly in his operas. And uh, so it was always a joy to act these parts. Uh, but he also required you to have huge sounds and, and legato singing huge, huge lines. And wow, that whole second act of Butterfly, uh, it's just a tearjerker. And I just sang it all over. You know what, Tobias, uh, when I was learning that role, I had the chance, an opportunity to, before I even sang it, to work with a actor in Hollywood named Soon Teko. And he, he had done to uh, Kabuki theater and so he let me go to the Kabuki theaters with him. And then he taught me a, a original old Japanese dance and he worked with, me with my movements and everything. So I was so privileged to have him go through every line of Butterfly with me that way. Tell me, Leona, did, did you, um, you worked with all the great tenors, uh, Pavarotti, Domingo. Did you have a favorite among any of them? Ooh, that was a loaded question back in the day. I would never say. Well, we're... <laughs> I didn't want to be ostracized. I would never say I had a favorite. <laughs> oh my God, I couldn't imagine. I probably they wouldn't ever want to see with me again if I said such a thing. Maybe but you can't here's, say it here's what I here's what I love. Excuse me. What did you, you say, can Tobias? Say it today, though. Oh, I can say it today. Yeah. I I love the dinners for different reasons. Um, Luciano, you couldn't beat the sweetness in his sound and uh his his uniqueness of sound obviously you know the world loved him and uh wow it was you know just a privilege to be there with him and placido he sang all these other dramatic roles you know the aidas and the trovatories and forces and stuff with me and uh wow you know the dramatic tenor and 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 so viral and everything is just two different things but i love them for all of those reasons but you know i i i also had a boatload of tenors from italy that i sang all around the world with that maybe weren't as well known as them but they were that well was known one of them and uh, one quite Chinella. wonderful who uh, oh Chinella, Chinella, who you Chinella. yes yes hermano Mauro there with me yes he was yeah and we did different things around the world but uh, what was who is it? Uh, Armando Mauro, who sang a lot at the Met. We did many things all over oh, yeah. in Italy and France and everywhere together. He was one of the tenors I sang with a lot. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I um, the, the tenors. I still had these working relationships with the uh, like like Joan Sutherland. Uh, we when she came back to Australia. My, matter of fact, I did a lot of my learning in Australia. That company was very good for me. I did many of my first there. They the working situation was gorgeous and their orchestras were stupendous. And anyway, so, but Joan had come back there to do some operas. And so we got to know each other. And so I think we did one opera together, Idomeneo. Ricky asked me to do that with her. But other than that, but we were really good friends. We had so many dinner parties and so much fun together. And when I had my son, she knitted me this beautiful baby blanket. And so those memories I'll take with me forever with Joan and then uh, Jackie, uh, you know, Marilyn Horn, we did a lot of uh, oratorio and things together. And these people were, you know, they were like my big sisters. They, they just were so supportive. Grace Bumry, you know, I did a many, many Aidas with her across the world. And uh, Martina, I, all of them uh, were so I, 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 wonderful. Yes. And uh, one of your colleagues, uh, one of your colleagues from back then said to me that you were known around the Met as Little Leontine. Oh, how wonderful, how sweet. What a compliment, oh my God. I'd, you know, I'd, I'd all of to, us. Uh, yeah, I'd love to play yeah. some of Ernani uh, for our our audience. You you sang the, we have the trio with you singing with Cheryl Milnes, another oh. legend, and mm -hmm. uh, Luciano Pavarotti yeah. with Jimmy Levine yes. conducting. And uh, let, let's hear a bit of that, okay. uh, Michelle. 
God, that was quite a event, that Ernani and those guys. It was, I call that opera, it was almost like, you, you remember that movie, Something About Mary? Yes. <laughs> you remember that movie? Because, uh, yeah, well, this is like that because everybody was in love with, <laughs> with her. And so it was so much fun being with all those guys, those professional exemplary singers at the top of their craft. And I did a lot of things with Cheryl. Cheryl was amazing. He was always so cerebral. He was always studying And you did you a lot with Cheryl. Jimmy. You, with who? You, you must have Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Jimmy the oh yes, I was there 18 seasons. So yeah, he conducted many of my uh, operas. I did uh, my first Forza with him and uh, wow, Jimmy. As a matter of fact, you know that Aranani, he told me privately, he said, you know what, sometime I get in the dump, I'll just pull out the DVD of Aranani. I love to listen to that. <laughs> but yeah, we did many, many, many things together. Many new productions with Jimmy. Yeah, we, he was we great, have, great I, I do want, great I would like everyone to hear your, the you that you did with with Jimmy Levine oh, yes. and with yes. Domingo's Calif. Domingo's right. not singing. We we just see him here, but we we could we could oh, just okay. <laughs> in a little bit. You're, you're Liu. I would love to share that. Oh, you're a senor you. Yeah. Okay. Michelle. <laughs>
Zuka's in Sydney, oh. Liana. Oh my God, that was a, a special time with Zeffirelli's production, and oh my God, I'm just so honored to have been able to do all of this. So you wow. you sang everywhere in the world, but you always came back to Tulsa. You sang a Trovatore with us, um, yeah. and uh, with with Kurt Adler conducting in 1982, and. Yeah. Aida in 1985. I I think something went wrong with the scenery in in the Aida. <laughs> they called it Aida. Nile Beach. Yeah, they called it Nile Beach because it was sand all over the stage, and that was a, a horror to the musicians in the pit. <laughs> so they had to scoop a lot of the sand off. Oh, not good. <laughs> what do you remember about the singing in Oklahoma at? at the uh, PAC, which was fairly new at, at the time and for, for our mm -hmm. own audiences. Oh, yes. Uh, it was, you know, our, Tulsa, when I came back for the Trovatore, uh, everybody was so fabulous in Oklahoma and the Opera Guild there, they're still doing, I'm sure they're still being beautiful to people. They just made one feel so wonderful. And then uh, it was it was lovely for me uh, uh, you know, to come back to Oklahoma. And uh, wow, I was doing Trovatore at the Met, I think, too, at the same time. So I just came down to do that at Tulsa. But I was so happy about their professionalism. And I think uh, Trovatore was Kurt Atlan. So it, that was an old kind of gathering for me with Kurt because he helped me get started. And let me tell you a quick story about that Trovatore. Kurt was a bit slow with the Tempe and things. And so I was just dragging through Damor Sulare and Jose, which you need to have strength to do that, aren't you? So I said, Maestro, can we just move that a little bit? And he says, well, you know, he went on this whole spiel about how they ought to be wanted this way and that way. And then I said to him after a moment, I said, you know, I think Verdi came to me in a dream and he said he wanted me to move it faster. <laughs> He thought that was a hoot. So he said, okay, Leona, we'll move it. We'll move it. But that was my memory about Kurt Adler in, in, in Tulsa. It's good advice to, to sopranos who want the conductor to move it along. <laughs> well, I could only, composer came, yeah, well, minute, I could only. composer came to the minute Yeah, three. he thought that was hilarious. Well, but he thought that was that. hilarious, but we had our history. I, mm -hmm. but I, I, uh, you had one composer that came to you in real life and asked you to record his second symphony in 1986. You, you yeah. remember that? So, uh, you, you came yes, to I do. And you, and, you, and you came to Houston. You were the I young was, kid. I was, we were kids and <laughs> I was the residence of the Houston Symphony. And, uh, and right. we, the Houston Symphony wanted a big, big star to record the Symphony with with a, a, a big window voice and uh, and you came and did it and um, it it was really extraordinary you 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 showed up for the recording session at eleven and you were done at you were done in forty five minutes Elmer your husband <laughs> Elmer was in the recording booth with Hi. me and uh, I would say no we have to take that again because I didn't understand that word and he said. No, 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 no. Jackie Horn, you, when you hear Jackie Horn, you don't understand any of the words. So it does, that does <laughs> Oh my God. He probably, oh, he probably said Johnson. <laughs> but Johnson. anyway, yeah, oh God, that shows you the opera singer's husband. Yeah, he was all involved totally. But, you know, uh, I remember he and I, when we first heard a, a, a clip of, of what we were to do with you, and when they approached me and asked me what I sing that, it was a. Uh, privilege for me because uh first of all your writing is just glorious and we elma and i said wow this really sounds straussian to us and and then uh then uh oh they're showing pictures recording session <laughs> and then uh yeah he was oh yeah the maestro he came to my apartment in new york to go over the music before i came to to Texas, yeah, wow. But I was so privileged because I felt that it gave me 
your music and you asking me would help people to understand how I could be versatile and it's not just opera because I had a prolific career in uh, recital work and oratorio, but not many people knew that. So when you asked me for that, I was just privileged. And the music was gorgeous and the theme, you know, your theme of your piece about, you know, music, uh, you know, healing the soul and things. So it, that really rang with me. And and it was so gorgeous. Your your, your orchestration is just phenomenal. Uh, you you were you brought a dreamlike quality to, quality to it, which we'd like to share just a, oh. a minute of, uh, from the recording of my Symphony Number no. Two. Oh, Alf. okay. And um, we're going to put the poem up on the screen, and we'll just hear the the end of the aria uh, uh, that you that you okay. recorded. my mute on anyway your music oh your orchestration is so gorgeous oh I, thank you again you for doing that. thank mm. you for doing that again. I, I, I don't know if you remember we 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 met you after the, we recorded the rest of the symphony that day and we Arya and i met you and elmer for dinner and uh you right. came in i said what did you what did you do the rest of the day and you said well i i went to the gallery and i did a lot of damage do you remember oh. that Me. Oh God! I, you know what, Tobias? It's just the worst thing. I mean, I had all of the world at my feet, and then women love to shop, and that's what I love to do on my spare time. <laughs> oh well, gosh! Well, yeah, that sounds years, like me. I went to the gallery. Thirty years later, I came to Tulsa, and um, and there found out that you were just a few, uh, down the road a piece, and I invited you to. Uh, the first production I did in Tulsa, which was Pearl Fishers, and we went. You can You went as my date. I think. I think Michelle is a picture <laughs> of that. And uh, oh, I you, was so happy to go. Wow. It, it was so so great. Have you have you there? Everyone was thrilled. And I remember when we sang the Star Spangled Banner, which we always do. Um, your voice was soaring above the entire audience. I won't forget that. Oh my that. God, I always try to not do that. Oh my God, I was trying to probably sing softer. Oh my God, because I don't want to be heard. Well, it just, it <laughs> had the ping, it had the ping, it didn't have to be loud. It had the ping in it, did man. You, and you oh sang, God. you came back and sang uh, on our gala Puccini to Pop with David Miller and Sarah Joy Miller, yeah. Alison Cambridge, Michael Todd Simpson, and, um, and you did master class. You do master classes. Started doing master classes. I do master classes. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. What, yeah. It's what, one of the. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, just, I, I just want to ask you a little bit about your experience with our Philstrip young, young artists. Uh, 
what what do you oh, yeah. try to put, to share with them most? Well, I I love working with young people. Uh, it's a, a thrill because you hope that they can go away with that they value that maybe they could. Uh, oh, there I am teaching. <laughs> I, I get such a joy, uh, Tobias, uh, with them that um, they have to really put that clock on me to say, stop, okay, it's time for the next one because I have, it's such a joyful thing to see them bloom about something I said maybe you could do with the word or the action or something like that. So I absolutely adore that. I've done master classes throughout the U.S., but I've been several times now to Tulsa, the Tulsa Opera, and I must say, you choose wonderful artists. Oh, my God, they are just tremendous. I'm sure many of them are on their way to a career. You really do a great job with that. I love doing that. We've seen some of them go on to, to the big houses, to the Met, and uh, yeah, doing okay. very well. It's a terrific program, and you make it terrific by yeah. your teaching oh, for us. Uh, I love it. Okay. We um, uh, we also um, uh, asked you to you, you contributed to our staying alive series last June, oh, yeah. uh, writing, making a special Juneteenth recording of summertime, which which um, we ha it's very short, and I, you did it at home, uh, and it it's so beautiful. I really have to I have to ask Michelle to play it for us. gorgeous what a gorgeous voice oh oh thank you thank you thank you thank Leona, you yeah, summertime that brings back a lot of memories yeah you you um were honored by black wall street recently with the legends award um and yeah. so I, I i did want to ask you how you feel about racial equality in opera today and uh what what your view on that is as an ambassador a cultural ambassador to oklahoma um i i uh yeah that was such an honor to get that black wall street award uh i'll just put this in i used to come to tulsa every year with my parents we had our church group here and they did a state convention every year so we would go right into that area of wall street so i feel a little connection to that but um yeah the racial equality in opera i think is going Fabulously. I got in a bit of a trouble in my early 20s. 
uh, one of my first uh, Facebook, uh, not Facebook, boy, it wasn't anything then like that, but no, Opera News. And I was stating in it that I wished there were black men in opera. Oh boy, did I do a, a firestorm. Oh my God. My manager ran to me like, oh, why did you say that? Oh, I started the whole thing. But anyway, now I can say there are black men at the Met. They're doing all kinds of things. It's such a joy to know. And, you know, when we know that Marin Anderson, she was a token, but when Lanting came in there and then I said, Grace and Shirley Martina, and the second round was Kathy Battle, myself, Jesse. And now it's just going on and on with the women that are now there today and the men. And so I, I think we're doing way better than, than Broadway <laughs> as far as racial equality in opera. That's, that's great to hear. We're, we're planning something special for, uh, to, to join uh, with the Tulsa Massacre Centennial Commission to later in the spring to uh, oh. commemorate the, the massacre from, of uh, Oh, Black how Wolf. fabulous. What a great and tribute. We'll be, talk, we'll be announcing that soon. And you'll be participating in, in it too, right? Yes, I just heard about it. Yes, thank you. How lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I, would, I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah, well, it, it's going to be an extraordinary event. I don't want to talk too much about it now. I probably said too much as it is, um, but I we <laughs> will announce it very soon. So, with that, who has a question for Tobias or Miss Mitchell? Yes, Pauline. Pauline. Leona, I think you should. Hi, share. Pauline. I think you should share with everyone. I remember so clearly when you did butterfly in Australia and you told me that um, they interviewed you and said how could a black singer sing a Japanese geisha and I loved I loved your response and you said what about all those okay Pauline remind <laughs> do you remember that <laughs> what did I say Pauline you said, what about all the they have the big women singing, Aida? singing the all the white women princess? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it was quite, you know, the Australians, they were, you know, really quizzical. And, and I'm going to tell you another story, Pauline, I told them that, but they also, I did Disdemona, Otello's Disdemona, and that's oh, why yes. I had to make up in all the blonde hair and everything. And so, and then the Otello, of course, had to make in all the black paint to be Otello. So <laughs> they had a field day with that in Australia. They thought that was amazing. But yeah, we love opera because you could just be anybody you want to be with makeup. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, my I, darling Pauline. She was I, I, very just loved it. them let me get started. You you sent me oh, that article so good from to see the you. Australia newspaper, and I thought, wow, good for her. <laughs> oh, it brings back many memories. Thank you, Pauline. Love you. That's great. Who else has a question? All right, Malik. Can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Yes, yes. Okay, I have a question for um, Leona. So I discovered you this year, and I must say, you sing the girl down. Like, I love you so much. Oh, uh, my question <laughs> is, <laughs> my question is, um, I, so I discovered you this year. I've found a lot of broadcasts, but was there a reason, and please correct me if I'm wrong, why you didn't record a lot of albums? Yeah, it was a problem at the time. I was, uh, as I was telling Tobias, I got in a bit of trouble because they thought I was kind of an activist. And so people kind of went away. They didn't really want to support me. So I started, it was a real, uh, hurtful thing at the time, but that's why I didn't do many recordings. But, you know, what was coming around the corner was all these videos and DVDs. And so luckily there's all kinds of things on YouTube of me from people pirating them <laughs> for years, thank God, so they could catch my, a lot of my performances, thank God. But that's why it was not a physical, uh, uh, you know, record. But thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Malik. Let's head down to Julian. Hi, Julian. Hi, hello. So I spend much of my time 
trying to convince people my age to come to the opera. And I was wondering, this is just both for oh, you and, and Toby, how do we convince young people like me to come to the opera? Um, why do you ask such hard questions? <laughs> you know, that's, that's, the, that's the question. It is the question we all struggle with. But um, when we did our Rigoletto in, in uh, the Drillers Stadium at One Oak Field, I saw a lot of young people there. Um, and oh, that's great. That was very encouraging. Uh, I, I think we have to, we have to open, up, open the doors to, to the Opera House and, and let in fresh air, which is what we did, what we did. We did an opera outdoors and and people loved it. And I it was a lot of there were a lot of young people there. We just need to stay in touch with them and um, and keep bringing them uh, operas that they can relate to. And and young young we have young genius singers, uh, people that that are your age singing, singing the greatest operatic roles in the repertoire. So um, but this is this is a very, very big subject, and it, it has to do with with new operas uh, finding yeah. subjects that are relevant to people, and um, making old operas uh, also finding the relevance to today and to their lives in them. Tobias, does uh, Tulsa Opera have an outreach program to the to the schools? Oh yes, where the do. opera. Oh, you do. So that's how how you can get some young people they hear it for the first time. We have an outreach schools. program, which Danny can tell you tell okay. you a little bit more about. Danny, well, would you that's know? how you throw it up. Yeah. Well, we and also I think. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Dot. We do Danny. have a program, raise your voices, that goes into every Tulsa public school that doesn't have a music staff, and then those schools are invited to join us at the PAC. And this fall, when we were at the baseball stadium, I worked extra hard to reach out to the families as they couldn't take a field trip with their class, that their family was going to have to organize right. it. And we had about 90 of the Raise Your Voice students and their family members join us at the baseball stadium this fall. Oh. That's fabulous. That's fabulous. I, you know, when you say young people, I think, of course, uh, somebody has to basically like music <laughs> in order to like opera. I think you have to like to sing in the shower, do something, you know, the, so that you'll have an affinity to, to at least come. But um, that's wonderful. I think that is so far reaching to get young people when you reach out in the school areas. Well, we Did are I see the Woodward? Yes, sorry. Yes, the, the women are here. And we have a question from Elizabeth. She's asking if Leona has any message to inspire children who would like to pursue singing as a career. Do I have a message? Yeah, um, I think sometimes I, I talk to parents and they're really pushing the kid around 13 or 14 years old. And I mean, they're getting so serious about these lessons and things. And I'm, oh my gosh, I'm like, just calm down a little bit. They need to get a little bit older before they really start all of this hard singing. And, and, and they've already decided what they are. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, you know, they just have to take care when they, when they have their young person, that they don't ruin the little person's voice before it even gets further. Because you have to watch, uh, everybody says they're a teacher, but you have it, uh, who was it? My coach always told me, he said, well, if you come from the lesson and you can't speak, that's the wrong teacher. <laughs> so, so I would say you have to make sure that the teacher can really teach you because a lot of people say they teach, but it doesn't always work for life. Hi, Caroline. <laughs> Hi. All right. They're, they're muted. Oh, we this talk all the time. And to yeah, buy it, thank you for, for telling us about it. It was, I, I didn't realize you were doing it. <laughs> that it's just, this is yeah, really- I've been crazy. enjoying Le yeah, Leona, this is fabulous. Leona, this is better than yeah. this book. <laughs> this is better than- Right, because we, we exchange menus. <laughs> 
<laughs> we exchange menus. They're always cooking such fabulous things and having a great time in their home. Yeah. So thank well, you for we'll, being here tonight. <laughs> we'll have you, we'll have you over for dinner when this whole mess is over. When this, when this COVID, oh man, oh yes, absolutely. Well, thank you. I'll look forward to that. Kyle, Gil, Kyle Gallion, I think you had a question. Kyle had a question. We'll go down to Kyle. Sure. Thanks very much, Danny. Uh, Leona and Tobias, thanks for doing this for everybody tonight. What an incredible privilege for, for everybody here. Um, I've actually got a question for both of you about language. Um, uh, Tobias, uh, about your compositions. Um, I, I don't believe you've done anything outside of the English language. Am I right on that? Well, oh, yeah. uh, I, I, the, my, my second symphony is my German symphony. So that was oh, the only thing in Goethe in German. <laughs> okay. And that's um, wonderful. I have, I've written in, in Spanish. Uh, I've okay. set Neruda sonnets, um, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I haven't, I haven't, I've only set German and Spanish. Uh, would you consider uh, ever putting a full opera on in a, a language other than English? In a language other than English? Yeah. You mean writing my writing one in another language? Yeah, like uh, uh, using a libretto <clears throat> in a in another language and having it performed in that language. That uh, well, I would charge extra for that, but <laughs> I, I of course well, I would probably if other countries do it. Yeah, they would put it in their language, probably. Sure, sure, sure. It, 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 I, since, uh, unless I was fluent in that, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a lot of languages. So if I wasn't fluent in it, it would be a, a lot of work, a lot of extra work. I would have to have someone yeah. constantly with me. Constantly. Sure. The language. But, but, but we are enjoying, we are enjoying his thing, his, his pieces in English. Oh my goodness, yes, you know, they're, they're some of the finest things I've ever written. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So actually, you know, that's a because there's so much of the other. Question, Leona, so Kyle? Yeah. Um, likewise, with language, I'm curious, Leona, what uh, what language you prefer to sing in, and what language you feel is your your best uh, language to sing in. Uh, well, I sang, of course, a lot of the Italian at operas. Uh, you know, most of the Toscas and Aidas and Forzas and things were in, in Italian. But I loved singing in French. I did a lot of um, uh, uh, recital work in French and, and, and even uh, German. Yeah. So I love those, uh, you know, and for its medium for the other kinds of music, you know, recital repertory and things. But um, the opera has mostly been Italian for me. And I like it because it likes me, I guess. <laughs> I like the Italian. Yeah. We do, we do have a, we do have a, a recording a film from the Met uh, of your of you singing singing in French singing Michaela and from Carmen which um, perhaps we have yes. Michelle you could can you pull that up so that maybe we'll unless the, unless there's some more questions that are urgently needing to be asked we might we might hear that listen to the French mm -hmm. yeah if there's one more question if not we'll go to the video Okay. Well, let's give Michelle's probably going to take a second to get that set up. Did, did you do, did you do, uh, did you do many, many Michaela's, uh, Leona? Oh my gosh. Yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> At the beginning of my career, so I was just all over the place doing those Michaela's. And you know, in the old days, the Met did tours. And so we would be touring all around the United States uh, in these operas that I did. So matter of fact, did I not stay with you once, Pauline, when I did a tour? I'm not sure. I might have been just doing <laughs> I can't remember, but we were always touring. She used to live in Houston. And uh, yeah, so maybe, maybe, but yeah, I did Michaela's all over the world, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, the video is ready. Here we go.
brings back many memories. Hmm. 1989. Wow. I think I sang with every Carmen that did a Carmen in those years. <laughs> well, did many, many, many Arianos, uh, Caballé, Chris Brown. I was just singing with everybody that did Carmen at the time. Wow. Really me great memories. Great memories. Hmm. So. Well, I, I, Leona, I want to thank you on behalf of Tulsa Opera and uh, all of Tulsa Opera's friends for sharing your your gifts with us and and your. It's hard to describe that your your voice is so sweet and so 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 from the heart and always always mm. moves. Thank you for being with us tonight, for all you do for Tulsa Opera. And uh, I want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. Um, it really uh, lifted our spirits to see all of you here. Uh, and um, come back on January 21st when uh, Patricia Reset joins us for uh, uh, our, our next conversation. And um, I, I'd like to wish you all a happy holiday and a much happier 2021. Amen. Me too. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.